We will move on to number 12. He gets cranky later in the day. <laughs> we observed that you made a quick, uh, quick trade on Petro China, not a typical buy and hold approach you do uh, on investment. Our question is when it comes to selling Petro China, what comes to your mind? And what suggestions you may have to these group of executives? The PetroChina decision, just as we made it to buy it at a valuation overall of 35 or to 40 billion when we thought it was worth 100 billion, uh, when oil, when oil was at $70 a barrel, roughly 75, I figured the value was about 275 or 300 billion and we could sell it at that price. And we no, we no longer felt it was undervalued compared to other oil companies, so we sold our stock. Now, incidentally, right after we sold it, it went up dramatically because, as you know, they issued A shares in China, and it became very popular. And at one time, PetroChina became the most valuable company in the world measured by market value, which would have come as an enormous surprise to investors seven or eight years early. So they've done a terrific job. And if it went down to a price that we thought was a discount, significant discount to its valuation, uh, we would buy PetroChina again. Uh, the, in terms of, I, I, I'm not so sure we don't have a lot to learn from the Chinese in terms of, of, uh, of business currently, more than they have to learn from us. I don't, I'm not sure I would want some of our practices to spread, to, spread to China. It's, it's, it's a remarkable society, what's going on there now. And, and I, went, I did go to Dalian not long ago, and I must have traveled for 45 minutes from the center of town out to our, our plant there. And I just saw really hundreds of, of plants, that, factories that have developed in recent years. It, it, it's the economy is, the, the Chinese people are starting to realize their potential. I mean, what it amounted to is you had uh, for centuries you had people of lots of ability, but a system that did not unleash their potential. And now it's starting to be unleashed, and that's why you're getting very substantial GDP growth per capita, and I think it'll continue. Uh, I would just look for the best practices in American industry as you see them and copy them, and I would, I would discard the rest. And I, I think it's, a, you know, it's, it's, it's how you learn about human behavior. You try to, if you look at an effective individual, you try to figure out why they're effective. You know, why is Don Keogh or why are Tom Murphy, why are they so effective? Why do people want to be around them? Why are they leaders? Why do people love them? And you see certain human qualities and you should copy those qualities. And when you see some guy that should have everything going for him and everybody in town hates him, you know, you want to make sure you don't have any of those qualities. Well, I would do the same thing in terms of looking at businesses in this country and try and look for what I admire and emulate it and make sure that Try, try very hard not to let the things that you find over here that uh, are distasteful to you creep into your own system. Charlie? Well, I hope you'll go back to China and tell them that you met at least one fellow that really approves the Confucius emphasis on reverence for elderly males. I think you should dig yourself out of that by including females, too, Charlie. <laughs> that wasn't Confucius's idea. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> no reason why you can't modify it. 